Welcome to Hope Kitchen. Today we're gonna to do biscuits and gravy, which is something that's fairly quick to make and easy to make. It's really yummy and good and just a comfort food that people really love to eat, especially in the colder weather, but if you're camping, you can actually do this uh, over the campfire, or if you have a campfire stove and you have a little griddle, you can do up your biscuits and you can make your gravy in a pan next to it and have a wonderful luscious breakfast or brunch or dinner or lunch or it's good for any meal is what I'm saying. So hey Mark, baking you hi doing? David there it's you great go. To see you. <laughs> yeah um, would you like what some are biscuits? we making today? We're, we're, we're making biscuits and gravy. Biscuits and gravy that's my favorite ever. There you go. And, and I've made that for breakfast you on have. Sunday, I haven't I? Love I? Biscuits right? and gravy. So, yes. Wow, wonderful. So is there gonna be leftovers? Is this gonna be yes. sent out through the internet? Yeah, to this people? will go to you as oh, well as everyone wow. else here. I can't I can't wait this is just looks so delicious well i won't interrupt you again, no i know you, you would never do that oh. would you okay today we'll be using flour which will be in both the biscuits and the gravy baking powder which is only in the biscuits salt which will be in both the biscuits and the gravy milk which will be in both the biscuits and the gravy, butter and vegetable shortening, and I'll tell you how much of it as we go. In the biscuits. Now in the gravy, we have sausage over there, which you'll see when we start to put that together, some milk, some salt and pepper, and we'll use a little bit of flour in there too. There are some tools you'll need. If you're gonna make your own biscuits, you need a rolling pin, you need some measuring cups. I have a one cup, a half cup, and a quarter cup, and some measuring spoons, and probably a knife to just measure things out. Also, your hands are really good tools in this biscuit uh, recipe because you'll be mixing it up with your hands. Make sure they're clean, which I just did before we started, but impeccably clean, as Jacques Pepin would say. Now, you want to shortcut all this? You can do this, which is a pre-made biscuit dough. You can take it out. I will be honest, I've never made these, so I think you just open it up. They're either in sections or you open it up, roll it out, and cut it out. But why bother when you can make fresh, easy biscuits on your own? And they'll taste better because what are you putting in it that probably didn't go into this? Love. When you make your own food, you put your love in here and people are going to love it. Okay, for our biscuits, it's really simple. We take one and three quarter cups of flour and we don't even have to sift it. There's one and then a half and then a half of a half. I'm going to just use this half and measure out a, a half of that, which is a quarter. So we have our flour in here. We take one tablespoon and that's a lot. So it makes them rise a lot of the baking powder. That's what makes them all puffy, along with the butter. One tablespoon of butter. And then we're gonna take uh, half a teaspoon of salt. You don't wanna to put too much salt or it'll taste really bad and salty and you don't want that. And then we're gonna mix this up with our hands very quickly. And then the recipe calls for four to six tablespoons of butter or vegetable shortening or a mixture of both. Now I have a quarter cup of butter, which is four tablespoons of butter, and I'm gonna add two tablespoons of vegetable shortening to it. In my opinion, the mixture of it gives it a good texture and a good flavor. And we take our vegetable shortening and we reach in here, one tablespoon goes in. Okay, so we now got our butter and our shortening and it's hot out, so it's really melting. Now we're gonna use this tool that we had, our hands, our fingers, just with our fingertips, we're gonna work that wonderful butter and the shortening into flour. We were looking for what the recipes usually say, something that looks like a rough cornmeal, which just means it looks like the flour is heavier or thicker. You can see that the flour looks a little heavier. It's a little different color. It's got that butter worked in. It's okay if you don't squish it all in, that butter will melt into the biscuits and taste really good. We add our milk. Now this is three quarters of a cup of milk. Goes right into this. You can use a mixing spoon if you want, or 
you can actually use your hand and you'll see as we come around it's starting to make a nice little ball of dough. Now if it's still too wet you can take a little bit more flour and add it in there. Just work it in. You want this to become just a little drier and you can see just that little bit of flour I put in there made it come together very nicely. Okay, so now you've got your biscuit dough. This is basically what's in here. And you made it all yourself by scratch. So my dough is ready. We're gonna flour up our table and roll it out, cut them out and put them in the oven. Let's get to that. To begin our rolling process, we take a little bit more of our flour and we just dust it over the countertop. Or if you have a, a cutting board that you use to roll on, you can do that. But just the countertop is fine. I tend to like to roll my pastry doughs or any doughs in the flour and then I'll put a little more flour underneath it. Then we put some flour on our rolling pin so it doesn't stick to the dough and the dough doesn't stick to it. And we just roll this out to about a half inch. You can turn it to make it easy. Let the rolling pin do the work. You don't have to do much pressing on this dough. One thing you can do with this, which I'm gonna do right now to make it even flakier, fold it two thirds of the way down, third of the way up, and then you can roll it again. And that just adds a little more of the flakiness that we like in our biscuits. Okay, now you're gonna do more than one roll of this because right now we're taking, this is the big cookie cutter that I have. You can use the smaller one, but the recipe calls for six to eight biscuits. Let's see how many we can get out of this. We make them as close as we can to the edge and to each other. So right now we're gonna get four out of the first roll. We can just pick this up and we place this on the cookie sheet. That cookie sheet is not greased. It's not floured, nothing on there. So you've got butter and vegetable oil. I'm gonna reuse this flour a little bit and roll it out, turn it, roll it out. You don't have to do any more folding over. It's already been folded enough. One, two, they don't have to be perfectly round. We've got six there. Let's see if we can get two more here. If not, we'll only have seven and Somebody will have to go without. No, I'm kidding. You can split one and share, which is always important. One. And there's seven. Big question is, can I get eight? We're gonna have a very odd shaped one. Never waste your pastry or your dough if you can help it. This one is gonna look funny when it comes out, but I guarantee it'll taste just the same as the others. So that's my eighth one, that'll be mine. Okay, then we're gonna turn around and put it in the oven. You wanna make sure it's preheated uh, at home when you're cooking. Uh, let mom and dad help you with that very hot oven. In it goes in the middle of the oven. And that will bake for about 12 to 15 minutes. So now we're gonna make our gravy while the biscuits are in and baking. We are going to use two and a half cups of milk. That's already measured out. We're gonna use a quarter cup of flour. This happens to be 16 ounces of sausage. Just use regular sausage. Don't get hot and spicy because that won't translate well. That won't taste really good in your sausage. So uh, since this is 16 ounces, the recipe calls for six 0.9 ounces, so call it seven ounces, which is just over half. So you look at about half, and we cut a little bit more than a half. We just cut this open. Don't throw the other away. You can save that, make a sausage patty later, make a sausage burger. And we're just gonna, this pot is really hot. So I'm gonna turn it down a little bit. We do this over medium heat. We don't turn it way up, because if you do it over too hot a heat, it's gonna cook brown too fast, it won't be cooked in the middle, and it'll taste bitter if it burns. So we just break up the sausage in the pan and let it cook. 
I'm actually going to bring that down even a little bit more. One thing I'm noticing about this sausage, while it's cooking very fast, hey, what I'm noticing is that you can see, uh, I don't know if you can see it in the camera, there's, there's not a whole lot of fat in there. So what I'm going to do, and you can do this too, you don't have to, and that's the alarm for my biscuits. I'm going to turn that off for a second, but before I go check my biscuits, I'm going to take one tablespoon of butter. Well, actually, I'm going to take a half a teaspoon of butter, I think. And just drop that in and let it melt in there, so that'll give me the, the fat content that I need to make this gravy in a minute. So give me two seconds while I... Let that butter melt, and I'm going to run over and check my biscuits. Look at those now, golden brown on the outside. They're nice and high and fluffy. Those are going to taste great with this gravy. Okay, my meat is thoroughly browned. The butter has melted. Now I'm going to take that flour, and I'm going to start stirring that in. And what this does is it gives us what they call a roux. It gets together with that fat and that butter, and it gives us the base for our gravy. Okay, it almost sounds a little weird to just add flour in there. Kind of get a coating on some of the sausage in there. Flour is all mixed in. I'm gonna take my milk. Remember, it's two and a half cups of milk. Pour it in over this sausage and roux. This takes patience. What you do is you just keep stirring this gently over the same heat that you had the meat cooked in. And this is gonna take a little while. And what you're gonna see, you're actually gonna see it start to thicken up. And thicken up, it's the flour working with the milk and the fat that you had in there. And you can stop whenever you want. You could have it like this if you wanted. It'll taste okay, but in my opinion, the texture of it or the feel of it isn't going to be as good as if you let it just sit. But you can see how, see how thick that's getting? I'm going to go a little bit longer. I don't want to go over. It's scary at this point because you might go over. And if you think it's too hot, you can turn that heat down just a bit. It's getting thicker. You can see it's almost got a film on top, but you want to mix that in. At this point, I'm going to add just a dash of salt and a dash of pepper. And you have to remember that sausage generally has some, some herbs and spices in it, like sage or salt and pepper already in it. If you get the hot kind, it has hot peppers in it, and you really don't want that for this dish. But see how thick that's gotten? It's a lot thicker. It's coating the back of the spoon. That's just about ready. And again, depending upon how thick you like your gravy, you could stop now. It'll taste good. And speaking of tasting, I'm going to take the end of my cup here. Yum. I'm going to add just a touch more pepper. Okay, we're going to serve this now, so we'll go over and put some plates out and some, cut some biscuits up and put our gravy on it. Just look at that. All right, when you're ready to serve your biscuits and gravy, taking your gravy off the heat, just give it a quick stir because it can get a film on the top. That okay. uh, We take one biscuit, and this is a proper serving, so I don't cut my biscuits. I just want to show you the flake in there. See how it's pulling apart in layers like that? That's a yummy biscuit. You see it's cooked all the way through and it's nice, almost spongy, but not really. We take a nice spoonful of our gravy with the sausage in it and we just put it on top. And if anybody doesn't like that, they just don't know what they don't like. 